Good day everyone. So in this video, I am going to discuss our chapter 8 which entitled probation. So what is probation? Okay. So when we say probation, it is a procedure wherein a sentence of offender is temporarily suspended and he is permitted to remain in the community which is subject to the control of the court and under the supervision and guidance of a probation officer. It is a privilege granted by the court to a person convicted of a crime or a criminal offense to remain with the community instead of actually going to prison. So, sa madaling salita, probation is considered as a procedure as a second chance given to a convicted offender wherein his sentence will be temporarily suspended and he has the chance to serve his sentence in the community. Okay, instead of serving his sentence inside the jail or prison, he will remain in the community. Okay, but then, kahit na siya po ay nasa community, siya pa rin po ay under sa supervision at guidance ng isang probation officer. Okay? The probation officer will be the one to monitor and supervise all the things na ginagawa ng probationer. Okay? It is a privilege granted by the court. Okay? Yung mismong court po na may hawak ng kanyang kaso, doon din po magpipetition uh, yung petitioner and then sila din po ang magagrant ng probation doon sa petitioner. Okay? Bago po siya sabi, uh, bago siya matawag na isang probationer. Okay? So, instead na siya ay mag-serve ng kanyang sentence sa loob ng kulungan, okay? He has now the chance to remain in the community. That is one of the um... Uh, uh, one of the helpful uh, program of our government is um, to ease overcrowding in jail and also to restore the dignity of the offender. Okay? So, we have their presidential decree number 968. So, PD 968 is otherwise known as the Probation Law of 1976. It recognizes such trend. However, the decree separates adult probation from juvenile probation for it expressly excludes those entitled to the benefits under the provision of PD-603 known as the Child and Youth Welfare Code and similar laws. Okay? Magkaiba po kasi yung binibigay na program ng PD-603 doon sa probation law. Okay? which is na separate po para yung probation ng mga adult offender at ng probation ng mga youthful offender. That is because of uh, PD number 603, which entitled as Child and Youth Welfare Code. Okay? PD 968, uh, which provide a less costly alternative to the imprisonment of first-time offender, then... President Ferdinand E. Marcos issued on July 24, 1976, speedy numbers 968 known as the Probation Law of 1976 and under PD 968, the court may after it shall have convicted and sentenced an accused and upon application of the said accused suspend the execution of the said sentence and place the accused on probation for such period and upon such terms and condition as it may deem best. First time offender were given a second chance to maintain their place in society through a process of reformation which is better achieved when he is not mixed with the hardened criminals within the prison walls. Okay, ang sabi po dyan, PD 968 provide a less costly alternative to the imprisonment of those first-time offender. Okay? Bakit sinabing it provides less costly? Okay? Bakit daw mas mura? Okay? Because 
if the convicted person will serve his sentence in jail or prison, syempre, okay, ipoprovide lahat ng ating gobyerno yung pangangailangan ng offender na yun. Okay? Pagkain, security, clothing, and so on. Okay? So, dagdag po yun sa gastusin at iba budget ng ating gobyerno kapag ka sinerve nga nung convicted person na yon yung kanyang sentence sa loob ng kulungan. Kaya less costly po ang probation kasi nga po mag stay po siya sa community so hindi po siya uh, ang kanyang pamumuhay hindi na po magiging under ng ating government but rather he needs to provide for his own self. Okay? siya ang bubuhay sa kanyang sarili. Okay? No need na pong bigyan ng pagkain, no need na pong bigyan ng security, no need na pong bigyan ng mga clothing, and all other things na kailangan ng isang prisoner. Okay? So, for PD-968 po kasi, ba? Diba, um, kailangan pong mag-apply for the said probation. mag apply po siya dun sa court upon application. Okay? Masususpend po yung execution ng kanyang sentence and then yung accused po ay mapupunta or mapiplace po siya probation. And then meron po siyang mga terms and conditions na kailangan po niyang sundin kahit na po siya ay nasa community. So, hindi po ibig sabihin nun na porkit siya po ay granted ng probation, ay talagang malaya po siya. Okay? But rather, there are still conditions and limitations that he or she needs to comply with. Okay? So, what is probation? Okay? Another definition of probation, it is a disposition under which a defendant after conviction and sentence is released subject to conditions imposed by the court and under the supervision of a probation officer. Okay? When we say probation kasi guys, uh, dapat po yung taong magagrant po ng probation is convicted. Okay? So, when we say convicted, meron pong final judgment. Siya po ay nahatulan na guilty beyond reasonable doubt ng court. Okay, and then, he will be released from the prison. And then, mabibigyan po ng conditions na i-impose ng court. Pero, still, under pa rin siya ng supervision ng isang probation officer. So, the word probation is from the Latin word probatio, which means testing. Okay? Testing, syempre nga, di ba, bibigyan ka ng second chance na makalaya. So, test nila whether you will comply with those conditions na set ng court. Okay? The word probation is also said to be originated from the Latin verb probare or prober, which means to prove. Okay? In criminal law, it is a period of supervision over an offender ordered by a court instead of serving, in, serving time in prison. Okay, so we have here some of the basic definitions under probation. So we have petitioner. Okay, petitioner is a convicted defendant who files a formal petition for probation. So to make it short, when we say petitioner, nag-a-apply pa lang po for probation. Okay, still applying, hindi pa po siya granted. Hindi pa po siya grantee. Okay. Probationer, yan na po yung person to be placed on probation. Yan na po yung nagrant na po yung probation. And when we say probation officer, it is a person who investigates for the court a referral for provision or supervise a probationer or both and performs other related duties as directed. So, probation officer will be the one to supervise and monitor the probationer. Okay? So, next, we will move on now to the forerunners of probation. 
So, probation, sabi nila, it was first legally established in United States. Kiniklaim ng US na sa kanila daw nag-originate or nanggaling ang probation program. But to trace its origin, it is important to know the earlier schemes for humanizing criminal justice under the common law of England. So, to take note guys, probation originated from England and not in U.S. So, these procedures were found in the laws and customs of England and were adopted by the colonists who settled in the eastern shores of United States, okay? So, probation as a practice is believed to have been the product of the following olden practices. So, take note po ah, nagmula po sa England ang probation and then yung mga colonists po kasi na nagsettle doon sa eastern shore, shore ng United States, Kaya po nila na-adapt yung probation. Okay? And it is believed to have been the product of the following olden practice. Ito po. Ito po yung mga forerunners ng probation. Number one po dun is the benefit of clergy. Okay? Bakit benefit of clergy? Dating back to the reign of Henry II in the 13th century, it originated in a compromise with a church which had maintained that a member of the clergy brought to a trial in King's Court might be claimed by the bishops or chaplain, representing him on the ground that the prisoner was subject to the authority of a ecclesiastical court. So, ano ba yung term na clergy kasi? So, when we say clergy, guys, it pertains to a priest. Okay? Pare. Okay? So, or other term din po ng chaplain po ang clergy. Okay? So, ito po guys, sa benefit of clergy kasi, for example, they are the one who commits crime. So, ang mangyayari po dyan, imbis na sila po ay under ng trial sa king's court or sila ay makulong, okay? Pwede pong i-claim ng other bishops or chaplain yung kanilang custody. Okay? They will represent him on the ground that the prisoner was subject to the authority of ecclesiastical court. Okay? Instead of king's court, siya po ay masasubject doon sa ecclesiastical court. Pag sinabing ecclesiastical court po, ito po yung mga court wherein it uh, it is related to religious sectors. Okay? That is benefits of clergy. Another, we have judicial reprieve. Okay? Judicial reprieve is a device of modifying the severity of the law uh, by temporary suspension of the sentence. This practice was much used by the early English judges and grew up at a time when new trials or appeals to other court was impossible under the common law, but it continued in the use thereafter. Early in the 17th century, with the establishment of settlements in America, English courts began to grant reprieves to the prisoner under sentence of death on condition that they accept deportation. Ito kasi guys, when we say judicial reprieve po kasi, is, uh, mangyari po dun is temporary suspension or uh, postponement ng pag execute ng sentence. Okay? Na, uh, nagsimula po yan way back 17th century in U.S., Okay, wherein yung mga ibang English courts po doon, nagsimula po silang mag-grant ng judicial reprieve doon sa mga offender na merong sentensya na kamatayan. Okay, death ang kanilang sentence, but in exchange to deportation. Okay, instead na sila ay papatayin, i-execute, okay, sila po ay ipapatapon. Okay, ano bang much better dun, di ba? Mamatay ba or ipatapon? Okay? So, syempre, mas maganda na lang po yung ipadeport ka. Okay? Pabalik ka kung saan ka dapat ibabalik. Okay? Another po, we have recognizance. Another forerunner of probation is recognizance. This is an older method of suspending 
or deferring judgment for good behavior. This was based in an ancient practice development in England in the 14th century. It is originated as a measure of preventive justice involving an obligation or promise sworn to under oath or there be a person not yet convicted but though likely from the information before the court to have commit a crime that he would peace and be a good behavior. Ito pong recognizance, okay, wherein there will be someone who will take also your custody. Okay? And then, magpapromise siya na magpapakita ng magandang asal. Okay? Pagka po hindi po nagpakita ng magandang asal while well, he is under the custody of other person, okay, parehas po silang magiging liable. For example, uh, right now, pag-recognizance kasi, pwede pong i-claim ng, ng mayor yung custody mo and then in exchange po that, magpapromise ka that you will uh, that you will show good behavior while you are under the supervision and custody of that mayor and then pag hindi mo po ginawa yun, syempre both of you will be liable. Okay? And last for runners of probation na po we have banishment or transportation. Okay? Actually, banishment or transportation is considered as the oldest form of punishment. Ito po yung pinakaluma, pinaka-old na pagpaparusa. Ito po yung pagpapatapon. Okay? This is a form of punishment which is done by indenturing the convict to penal colonies where they serve as a slave. Ayan. Until they completed their service of sentence, transportation of offender to penal colonies was practiced principally in European countries that had acquired distant colonies because of the needs and import labor into these colonies. So, ipapa... Uh, i-deport ka doon sa ibang colonies and then ma magiging slave ka doon. Okay, magiging alipin. Okay, kasi po, yun na po talaga yung pinaka-practice nila in European countries. Okay? Kasi kailangan po nila ng mga labor. Okay. So, next, we will move on to the founders or fathers of probation. Okay? So, number one, we have John Augustus. Okay. John Augustus from 1784 to 1859. Take note, John Augustus, the father of probation in U.S. Okay. The father of probation in U.S. So, he is a Boston shoemaker. Okay. Imagine, pagagawa lang ng sapatos. Si John Augustus. Pero bakit nga ba biglang siya ang uh, lumabas na founder or father of probation sa US? Okay? Traditionally known as initiator of the probation process. He also uh, coined the term probation. Siya po ang pinakauna na nag-coin sa term na probation and is viewed as its founder. Okay? He is a successful bootmaker by occupation in Boston. Yun talagang trabaho niya, guys. Bootmaker, shoemaker, ayan. Uh, John Augustus was the first American probation officer who developed several features that later become the characteristic of probation system. Actually, kasi ang work ni John Augustus po, um, uh, nangyari po dyan is tinake po niya yung custody ng at um, 2,000 convicts. Okay, and then siya po ang magsusupervise sa kanila. Primarily po mga alcoholics. Ayan, alcoholics. So, nabigyan sila ng second chance na maka uh, remain sa community and then siya po ang magmomonitor at magsusupervise sa gawain at mga pangyayari doon sa mga probationer na yon Okay? So, that's why siya po ang pinaka-first American probation officer. 
Okay, wherein na-develop po na yung mga iba't-ibang features, wherein yun na po yung trends ngayon sa karakteristik ng probation system natin. Okay? We have also Matthew Davenport Hill. Okay? He is the father of probation in England, primarily in Birmingham, England. Okay? He is an English lawyer and had also introduced the practice of suspending sentence and releasing the offender under the supervision in England. So, yan po guys, di ba, a while ago ang sabi natin, kiniklaim ng US na sa kanila nang galing ang probation. But then, it was really in England. Okay? So, si Matthew Davenport Hill po ang pinakaunang nag-introduce naman po yung program or practice na isususpend po yung sentence ng isang tao and then sila po ay makakalaya but then they are under the supervision of the government. Okay, that is for Matthew Davenport Hill. Okay, and also in the Philippines, we have Teodolo C. Natividad. Okay, Teodolo C. Natividad is the father of probation in the Philippines. He is the co-sponsor of House Bill Number. 393, entitled, An Act Establishing Probation in the Philippines, Providing Probation Officers, Therefore, and Other Purposes. Okay? He is also the chairman of Interdisciplinary Committee on Crime Prevention. Okay? Ito po yung committee that prepared a draft decree for the establishment an adult probation system in the Philippines. Okay? On the assumption, as Napocom Chairman, early in January 19, created technical national strategy to reduce crime. Okay? Si Chudolo Natibidad naman po ang father of probation sa Pilipinas. Okay? We have also other historical events and personalities. Okay? Next there, we have Father Cook. Okay? Father Cook po, apelyedo po yan, yung Cook po ah. So, at about 1870, Father Cook, also in Boston, U.S., he became interested in youth who were tied before the courts and whose cases were due to circumstances rather than the character. After investigating each cases and finding the offenders not to harden and still susceptible to reform, he made himself available to the court as advisors of these offenders. Judges realized the importance of his work in the reform of the young criminals so that they placed the convicted young offenders under his charge in 1878. Ito po ah, take note lang po si Father Cook po ang ang sumunod sa yapak ni John Augustus. Okay? Actually, parehas po sila ng kanilang kinontribute but uh, to make it specific po, pag si Father Cook Uh, Father Cook po kasi, nag-focus po siya sa mga young offender, sa mga uh, bata, sa mga teens, okay? Sa mga juvenile. Okay, sabi niya dyan, uh, nakakita daw siya ng, ng uh, pagkakataon na yung mga young offenders daw ay susceptible pa na magbago. Meron pa daw um uh, meron pa daw chance na magbago. Kaya ang ginawa niya diyan, sinik niya doon sa court na kunin yung custody ng mga uh, youthful offender na yon at siya ang magsusupervise at magbibigay ng advices sa kanila. So from that time nakita nila yung importance ng ginagawa ni Father ko kaya from that time on nangyari diyan lahat na ng mga youthful offender is binibigay yung custody kay Father Cook. Okay? Next, we have Governor Alexander B. Rice. Okay? He's the first, uh, the first probation law was passed by the legislature of Massachusetts and signed into law by Governor Alexander B. Rice on April 26, 1878. So, Governor Alexander B. Rice is the one who signed into law yung probation law. 
Okay, way back April 26, 1878. The first statute provided for paid probation officer for adult offender and it provided for the appointment and prescribed the duties of salary or paid probation officer for the court of Suffolk country. Okay? Yung probation law po, nakaprovide na po dyan yung mga paid probation officers para sa mga adult offender at ganun din po yung pag-a-appoint at pagbibigay ng duties and responsibilities ng mga probation officer at ganun na din po yung salary or yung sahod ng mga probation officer dun po sa probation law na pinas at sinain ni Governor Alexander B. Rice okay? next we have Edward H. Savage okay? he is an ex-chief of police of Boston Okay, was named as probation officer, thus becoming the first probation officer. So, take note, first paid probation officer po is Edward H. Savage. And then, in 1891, Massachusetts was followed by the other states. By 1994, all but six of the states in the U.S., the District of Columbia and federal government had probation. So, almost na po, almost lahat na po ng state ng U.S. during 1944 is inadapt na po ang probation, except po sa anim na state ng uh, U.S. Okay. Next, we have also the Federal Probation Act of 1925. Okay. It became a law on March 4, 1925, uh, which signed into law by President Calvin College. Okay? Huber Law. Okay, ano ba tong Huber Law na to? In United States Law in Wisconsin, permitting prisoner not so dangerous to society to be gainfully employed during the day while residing in Jail. Ito pong Huber Law na to is na-create po para po ma-permit okay, yung mga hindi po ganoon ka-dangerous na prisoner na pwede po silang magtrabaho tuwing umaga but then tuwing umaga habang sila ay nakatira pa rin doon sa jail na yun. Okay? Kasi di ba ang tradition is Pag nakulong ka, sa loob ka lang ng selda mo. But then, because of puber law, nabigyan sila ng chance na makapagtrabaho during uh, umaga and then, babalik ka pa rin sa selda mo pagkatapos ng trabaho mo. Okay, that is puber law. Next, we have also flash sheet. Okay, flash sheet. A uh, probation officer shall notify all police agencies by sending note that probationer is under his supervision. Maganda ito guys, ang flash sheet. Ang purpose po niyan is, dapat po yung probation officer po, notify po niya yung mga kapulisan. Okay? Na yung probationer na yon, yung taong convicted na yon ay under ng kanilang custody or ng kanilang supervision. Kasi di ba, pwede pong magtaka yung mga kapulisan na ayun ah, yung inaresto namin na convicted na yon bakit biglang nakalaya? So, syempre, para hindi po magkaroon ng confusion, dapat pong inotify ng mga probation officer yung mga iba't ibang police agency na siya ay under ng probation program. Okay? Next, we have also sources. Sources from 1888 to 1891, it is a unique probation method that was introduced in France and Belgium which provided probation with no supervision on the condition that no further offense will be committed within a prescribed period. Ang sources po kasi ay uh, wherein yung probationer po no need na pong i-undergo ng monitoring or supervision doon sa mga kondisyon na binigay ng court. But then, there is a certain prescribed period na dapat po hindi po siya mag-commit ulit ng crime. Okay? That is sources. Okay? Next, 
Let's move on now to the history of probation in the Philippines. Ayan, so we have Act Number 4221, which is considered as the Adult Probation Law of 1935. Okay, Adult Probation Law of 1935. The Philippines enacted the first probation of the Philippines. The first legislation was Act Number 4221, enacted by the Philippine legislator on August 7, 1935, and which created a probation offices under the Department of Justice led by a chief probation officer appointed by the American Governor General with the advice and consent of the United States. And this law provided probation for the first-time offender, 18 years old and over, and convert convicted of a certain crime. Ito guys, itong Act Number 4221, ito po ang pinakaunang probation law sa Pilipinas. Okay? Wherein, create po dyan yung mga iba't ibang probation offices and na under po, ang probation po ay under ng Department of Justice. Okay? Ang mangyari po dyan, ang head po ng probation offices ay chief probation officer na ia-appoint po ng American Governor General. Kasi remember, di ba, that was 1935. We are still under the regime of Americans. So, ang mga, wala pa po yung mga uh, iba, iba pa po yung mga regime dati or government dati. Under pa po tayo ng American regime, okay? So, kaya po ang nag appoint po dati ay yung mga governor general, okay? Ang Act number 4221 po ay binibigyan po ng probation yung mga first-time offenders. So, ibig sabihin po, first-time pong mag-commit ng crime, yun po yung mga qualified. And then, bukod po dun yung mga 18 years and above at saka po convicted of certain crimes. So, meron pong final na judgment. Okay, yun po yung Act 41. But then, ito po ang nangyari. However, the law is stayed in the statute books for only two years. Okay? Two years lang pong nag-effect po ang probation law na Act Number 4221. Bakit? The Act subsequently declared unconstitutional. Okay? Bakit sinabing unconstitutional? Okay? This was because by the case of People versus Vera. Okay? Unconstitutional by the Supreme Court on November 16, 1937. So, from 1935 to 1937 lang po, nag-took effect yung probation law. Okay? At ang isa po dyan na celebrated case po is People vs. Vera. Kasi po nangyari dyan, the ill-fated act was only procedural framework that was antagonistic with the Constitution or Charter. Under Section 11 of Act Number 4221, the fatal provision of this act provided that this act shall apply only to those provinces which the respective provincial boards have provided for the salary of a probation officer. Okay? Hindi po siya national, but rather, provincial lang po yung mga binibig, uh, na cater po ng adult probation law ng 1935, which is the Act Number 4221. Okay? Unconstitutional kasi po, only provincial or provinces okay with provincial boards lamang po ang nabigyan ng mga salary ng mga probation officer okay so what are the benefits of probation okay there are several benefits of probation number 1 is probation protects the society okay protects the society from excessive cost of detention. Okay, kasi po, pag, ba kagaya po nang sabi ko kanina, costly pagka ang isang offender po ay nakulong kasi po provide po lahat ng kanyang pangangay 
kailangan. Okay? Another press, it protects the society from high rate of recidivism. Recidivism, ito po yung mga paulit-ulit na nagkukumit ng crime. Okay? Kasi ba diba, pagka nasa loob ka ng kulungan, okay, ikaw ay naka-expose sa mga hardened criminals. So, possibly, pag ikaw ay naka-expose sa mga hardened criminal, pwede, ka, pwede mong ma-adapt yung mga behavior nila. And ang mangyayari po dyan, magiging recidivist ka. Paulit-ulit ka na lang magkukumit ng crime sa loob ng kulungan. So, pagka ikaw ay nasa probation, Siyempre, mas maganda ang reformation sa community. Okay? Probation protects the victim. Okay? Protects the victim because it provided restitution. Okay? Marerestore po yung normal. Okay? Marerestore po yung, yung tawag dito, yung honor ng victim, yung worth ng victim. Okay? And also, it preserve justice. Okay? Probation protects the family. Bakit? Okay? Because it does not deprive the wife and the children of husband and a father. Okay? Siyempre po, ang benefit po ng probation is that pagka nasa community po, yung member ng family, okay, Kunwari, tatay po yung nakulong, nabigyan siya ng chance na makalaya at mag-remain sa, sa society, makakasama niya yung kanyang asawa at yung kanyang mga anak. Hindi po madedeprive yung asawa at pagiging tatay niya sa kanyang mga anak. And also, maganda po dyan, it maintains the unity of the home. Sama-sama pa rin sila. Hindi po nakahiwalay si tatay, hindi po nakahiwalay yung anak, yung mga... Yung mga anak at saka yung asawa. Okay? Another benefit of probation po, it, it, uh, it assists the government. Okay, bakit? Because it reduces the population of prison in jails. Yan. Ang maganda pa po sa, sa benefit ng probation, magkakaroon po ng decrease sa population sa loob ng kulungan. Kasi nga po, instead na sila po ay nandun sa loob ng kulungan, overcrowded, okay? So, syempre, pagka napunta po yung iba sa community, magkakaroon po ng decongestion. Madidecongest sila. Okay? It lessens the clogging of courts. Okay? Bakit malilesen yung pagkaklag sa court? Syempre, guys, pagka kasi, no, pagka ikaw ay napunta sa probation, hindi, uh, ang isa po dyan na mangyayari kasi guys, hindi mo na po pwede nang i-apila yung kaso mo. Ito po kasi no, pag na-place ka sa probation, convicted ka na, hindi mo pwede nang i-apila yung kaso mo. Okay? So, malilesen na po yung clogging sa court kasi, Pagka umapila ka, tatagal na naman yung kaso mo. Umapila ka, di ba? So, pagka na-probation ka na kasi, bawal ka nang umapila. So, ibig sabihin, malilesin din yung trabaho nila. Kasi, di ba, karamihan kasi sa anong nangyayari dyan, pag nagkaroon na ng final judgment, a-appeal na naman sa higher court, a na naman sa higher court, and so on. Okay? Kaya malilesin yung pag-plug sa court. And also, malalighten din yung load ng prosecutor. Mababawasan yung trabaho ng mga prosecutors natin, mga abogado. Okay? Probation helps the offender. Okay? Paano mo masasabing ang probation matutulungan mo yung offender? Kasi nga po, it maintains the earning power. Pwede pa rin po siyang makapag-ipon. Kasi nga po, pag nasa community po siya, maghahanap po siya ng trabaho niya so that he could still support the family. Okay? It provided rehabilitation in the community. Siyempre naman po, mas maganda po ang rehabilitation and reformation ng isang convicted offender sa community kaysa po pag nasa loob po ng kulungan. Kasi nga po, kagaya ng sinabi ko kanina na pwede po siyang ma-expose sa mga hardened criminal. It restores his dignity. Mare-restore po yung kanyang honor, yung kanyang um, worth. Okay, syempre naman yung dignidad niya. Probation justifies the philosophy of men. Okay, that life is sacred. Okay, 
Alam naman natin that life is a blessing. It is a sacred. Okay? That all men deserve a second chance. Correct? Lahat po ng tao deserve pong mabigyan ng second chance. Kagaya ng bibigay mo ng second chance mo sa sa boyfriend mo na sinaktan ka. Hindi. Joke lang. So, syempre naman, pagka nabigyan ka ng second chance, wag mo na po yun sasayangin. Okay? Nabigyan ka na nga ng chance na makalaya, makasama yung family mo. So, ang dapat mo namang gawin sana na nabigyan ng probation is to follow all the conditions na binigay ng court kasi yun lang po yung kapalit ng kalayaan mo. Wala ka po dapat ma-violate na mga um, conditions and limitations na ibibigay ng court. Okay? That individual can change. Siyempre naman po, lahat ng tao nagbabago. Okay? The, that society has a moral obligation to lift the fall. Okay? Obligation po ng society or natin na yung mga tao pong nadadown is kailangan po natin sila hilain pataas at hindi po hilain na mas bumaba okay kasi nga po di ba din we need to lift yung kanilang mga dignidad na dapat po ma-restore po yung 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 kanilang dating pamumuhay okay and so on okay yun po yung benefits ng probation Okay? Ano bang advantages ng probation? Kanina po is benefits. Now naman po is the advantages of probation. Okay? The government spends much less if an offender is released on probation than if he were in place behind bars. So, yan. Paulit-ulit ko pong sinasabi, mas less po pagka ang offender po ay nasa community kasi hindi na po ipoprovide yung kanyang pangangailangan. The offender and his family are spared from embarrassment and dishonor of imprisonment. Ito kasi guys, no? ba? Diba, uh, sabi natin that is that Um, nalilabel yung mga membro ng pamilya na for example, nakulong yung tatay. So, syempre, merong kahihiyan yun sa part ng mga pamilya na naiwan sa community. Malilabel yung mga anak na for example, ah, anak yan ng kriminal. So, syempre, pagka nakasama nila ang fam um, tatay nila sa community, syempre, may spare na po yung kahihiyan sa kanila kasi nga, they are together. Okay? Family ties remain intact. So, syempre, intact, sama-sama pa rin. Thus, mapiprevent po yung mga broken homes or broken family. Another po advantage is prevent crime by offering freedom and aid only to those offenders who are not likely to assault society again. So, syempre, prevent crimes kasi nga po, ba diba, pag nasa loob ka ng kulungan, at naka-expose ka sa mga hardened criminal, possibly kasi, pwede ka ulit mag-commit ng crimes. So, unlike pagka ikaw ay nasa community, okay, so, syempre, that is your second chance, I think naman susunod ka sa mga conditions. At yun yung talagang dapat. Okay? It protects by placing under close supervision on dangerous offender while undergoing treatment and rehabilitation. So, kagaya nga ng sabi ko that hindi po porkit nasa community siya ay malayang malaya, hindi po. Kasi po meron pong mga probation officer na magsusupervise sa kanya. Okay? It reduces recidivism. Yan po, ma-lessen po yung mga paulit-ulit na nagkukumit ng crime. Recidivism. And other overcrowding in jails and prison. It reduces the burdens on the police forces and institution of feeding and guarding prison. So, ayan din po. Malilesin din po yung burden ng mga jail officer, yung mga police forces natin na sila ay monitor sa loob ng kulungan kasi nga mababawasan sila by use of probation, ayan, pagpapakain, pag-guard, and so on. Okay? It gives 
the first offender a second chance in life and provides an opportunity for the reformation of a penitent offender. So, yan ang bibigyan po ng second chance. It makes the offender productive or taxpayer instead of tax center or tax eater. Okay, syempre pag nasa community siya, magiging tax provider siya. Okay, instead na pag siya ay nasa loob ng kuluan, tax center, tax eater, okay, lahat po ng tax natin, sa kanila po napupunta, yung budget ng government natin, malaki pong budget na ibinibigay po sa mga jail or prison and that came from our taxes. Okay? It restores the successful probationer his civil rights. Siyempre po, may babalik po yung kanyang mga karapatan. Okay? It has been proven effective in developing countries that have adopted it. Okay? Ang advantage pa po niyan is talagang napatunayan na na effective po ang probation. Okay, and also, it is advocated by the United States or United Nations in its various congresses, crime prevention and treatment of offender. Okay, so yun po yung benefits and mga advantages ng probation. So actually, yun lang po yung kalahate ng topic natin for chapter 8. So the remaining topics of chapter 8 will be discussed on the next video. So, that's it for today. So, thank you and have a good day.